Hey there, welcome to Venti Chic. This is the ultimate hub where future billionaires come to fuel their inspiration. Now, let's chat about Richard Mill, shall we? Whether you're a fan or not, trust us, it sparks debates. You've got to give it to them. They play by their own rules. Ever since the RM001 hit the scene in 2001, Richard Mill has been marching to a distinctly different beat compared to your standard Swiss watchmaking. Ready for the scoop? Here are 5 intriguing elements that set Richard Mill apart and spotlight their unique approach to crafting wristwatches. Now, let's talk about the Bubba Watson Edition RMO55. And this isn't even one of their wildest models. You'd think, okay, simple timepiece, no dates, no automatic winding, how unconventional can it be? Brace yourself. The quirks start with the exterior, precisely the case. Exotic materials, old news in washmaking. The past decade saw the industry embracing bizarre construction methods and techniques as material tech surged forward. The RMO55 doesn't shy away here. It boasts a ceramic bezel. Now, that might not raise eyebrows, but what if I told you the entire three-part case isn't made of ceramics? Strange, right? Oh, and here's the kicker. This watch was crafted for Bubba Watson, a pro golfer. It's tailored for surviving a golf course beating. Fun fact, Bubba Watson can hit a golf ball at a whopping 188 miles per hour. Imagine that impact. Number 1. Ceramic Ceramic, despite its incredible hardness, has a knack for shattering under hefty impacts. Great for everyday use, but not the best when you're belting golf balls at a long distance. So what did Richard Mill do? They turned to trusty titanium, which is lightweight and not all that uncommon. But here's where it gets quirky. They gave it a high pressure rubber coating. The idea is that this fine rubber layer serves as the initial shock absorber, which sort of adds up. Yet, let's be honest, it's still a bit peculiar. Number 2. Case so, we've established that titanium isn't that unusual in watchmaking, unless it's cloaked in rubber. But the perks of this material are undeniable. It's lightweight, less than half the weight of steel, yet just as robust. It's a heat-resistant champ not succumbing until temperatures exceed 1500 degrees Celsius. Plus, it's a superhero against magnets and allergies, sporting an oxidation layer that's like a self-healing shield for scratches. Here's the catch though, it's a stubborn one to handle. Its heat resistance might be great, but its poor conductivity leads to tool wear. The hardness and bounciness translate to machine vibrations, resulting in an uneven finish. By the way, you can hit subscribe now and ring the notification bell so you're always in the loop. Going back, Richard Mill doesn't seem phased by these challenges. Not only is the case filled with titanium components, but the movement itself follows suit. To break it down, a movement consists of springs and gears that store, regulate, and deliver power to the hands. These need a sturdy framework, which comes from metal plates on either side. These plates sandwich the gears and springs, holding them in place. Traditional practice involves crafting these plates from brass for its machinability. But Richard Mill? They opted for titanium, which is the complete opposite. Despite being tough to shape due to its hardness and flexibility, titanium shines in the RMO55. It can be machined dead flat, ensuring peak efficiency and precision in the drive system. Plus, it's a master at soaking up the jolts from Watson's powerful swings. Number 3. Friction In the quest for optimal efficiency in a gear train, friction poses the toughest challenge. While friction's grip is beneficial for tires and brakes, it's quite the hindrance when it comes to channeling power to spinning hands. Lower friction means less energy lost as heat instead of useful movement. But just like tires and brakes, friction has a less glamorous side. As surfaces grind against each other, they gradually erode, disrupting the initial precision and triggering a cascade of issues. Think unwanted debris accumulation, amplifying friction, and an endless cycle of acceleration. Traditionally, lubrication fights friction by reducing wear between surfaces, but the real magic lies in having nearly frictionless surfaces from the get-go. This demands super hard materials, like diamond or slightly softer sapphire. 
speaking of sapphire, rubies and watch movements, they're basically red tinted sapphires due to impurities. Initially, natural gems ruled, until synthetic sapphire came in 1902, reshaping watchmaking. Dyed red at first, sapphire crystals don't have to be colorful anymore. Most watches, like this one, rock colorless synthetic sapphire. Richard Mill sticks to the monochrome vibe by using clear sapphire for the jewels. It doesn't enhance performance, it's pure aesthetics. Number 4. Movement when you take off the case back of most watches, you're greeted by a round movement in a round space. Even rectangular watches usually house round movements, sometimes with metal plates to fill gaps. It's budget friendly and snug. This setup works well for regular watches, preventing movement wobbling with full 360 degree support. But what if you want to rough it up during a golf game? A stiff casing transmits shock straight to the core, risking timekeeping errors or even total stoppage. A rubber loop could absorb shock, but it's tricky when the crown stem linked to the crown penetrates the case to reach the movement, usually fixed solidly. If the crown can't move, neither can the movement, yet a slight pivot like in the RMO52 lets the escapement absorb impact and avoid faltering. Picture car suspension, chassis and hub carrier fixed, wishbone between. RMO52, crown stem fixed, two points on chassis, movement suspended. Enjoying what you're seeing? Spread the joy by sharing this video with your loved ones. Number 5. Screws Now let's dive into another oddity Richard Mill has thrown into the mix. And it's a common thread across all their watches. We're talking about the screws, those tiny components nestled within. Generally, watch screws don't endure high torque, so they sport a standard flathead profile for easy threading, but not in the world of Richard Mill. In a watch meant for intense high-stress scenarios, packed with impacts and vibrations, screw management takes on a new level of importance. That's why Richard Mill devised their own screws, unique to their watches. Take a peek around the case edge. You'll spot them clamping the three-piece ensemble and securing the strap. With at least 4 lobes per screw, they distribute force evenly, allowing for greater torque application. This meticulous approach ensures the watch stays put, whether in an F1 cockpit or mid-swing during a championship deciding moment. Here's the kicker. Creating a screw like this demands not only its unique design, but also specialized tools for crafting it. That's a pretty hefty investment, believe it or not. While Richard Mill isn't the only player using exclusive screws on the exterior of a case, Q Hublot, they've taken it up a notch by employing them inside the watch too. Check out those mounting spots. They're fitted with these distinct screws, and brace yourself, they don't stop there. Even key structural parts within the movement sport these unique screws, although using them on a clasp might be a bit of an over-the-top move. Whether they're your cup of tea or not, Richard Mill watches are in a league of their own. The design might not be everyone's cup of tea, and let's not even get started on the price. FYI, this RMO55 comes in at a whopping 150,000 pounds, but you can't deny that the concepts and the execution are genuinely one of a kind. How about you? Any particular Richard Mill feature that tickles your fancy? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And that's a wrap. We appreciate you hanging out with us at Fancy Chic. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop. Catch you in our upcoming updates.